Hello everybody and welcome to Film Feud, the show where we take four passionate film fans and have pit them against each other so that they can decide which uh, films they think are the best and why. Um, I'm pleased to welcome, uh, starting on my left, uh, Harry, Rhys, Luke and Beth. Um, they'll be discussing today the questions, uh, best David Fincher film. I'm going to be awarding points on each round based on their arguments, not my personal preference as hard as that might, may be. Um, and um, so basically the first thing we're going to do is uh, have a couple, uh, maybe 30 seconds of just stating your answer to the question and maybe a couple, the main point why you've chosen it. Uh, and we'll do that for each of you and then we'll open into a group discussion where you can either support your answer more or attack the other person's argument. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we've done that, I'll award points at the end and, just, and tell you why. That. Everyone understand yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start on my left. Um, okay. Harry, what is the best David Fincher film? Uh, I think the best David Fincher film is probably The Social Network, because uh, it was written by Aaron Sorkin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reese? Um, for me, it's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, because I adore the story on its own, and I feel like while the Swedish uh, editions to, starring Numi Apache are like held in particularly high esteem as the best adaptations, Fincher's version is absolutely Fincher's version. It's an actual filmic adaptation of a great story rather than a straight up sla like slavish, uh, um, basically retelling of the story. Okay. Um, I think his best film is Seven, just because it's so David Fincher. It's everything about what he is. So it's like dark. It's quite gritter. There's a lot of brown in it. It's just like very quintessential <laughs> David Fincher. And when you as well, you consider that it was his second f full film. The only the film before it was Alien Three, so that doesn't really count. He doesn't even care. <laughs> that does not count. <laughs> um, so yeah, his first big film of its own sort of uh, franchise, and it, I just think it's as a result of that is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think my favourite David Fincher movie is either Fight Club or um, Gone Girl because in spite of the rubbish reviews and it being just really creepy, Gone Girl is a really David Fincher movie. It's just really like deliciously dark and just really harrowing and I, it's just like it's, it's unnerving to watch but it's also really good. Yeah. Um, and I love Fight Club just because it's so, it has just those like really badass moments and just it's just so psychological and deep and and just the cinematography is gorgeous in it. Yeah, I really okay. like it, yeah. What do you guys think of each other's picks? I, I think like what you were saying then about like, that all, all of these films, but I do think seven most, is like, they make you squirm in your seat mm. at points, like, because it's so uncomfortable or it's so awkward or it's so dark or for whatever reason they make you uncomfortable. And I think that's what he does very well as a director. But I do think Seven does it the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, the final scene in particular? Uh, yeah, just the build up to the final scene because you, you sort of know it before any of the characters realise <laughs> it. You go, oh god, it's coming. It's just like, yeah, the dude. Yeah. The final scene's basically me at Christmas with my mum when she wants to go. in the box. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Do you think Seven is. Do you think yours is better than Seven? And why do you think? Uh, I think Seven's worse. certainly kind of, like you say, it's the quintessential David Fincher film. It's it's kind of takes into account all of his uh, depravity, I suppose. Yeah. Is, is the word. It definitely <laughs> defines him as a filmmaker more than his other films. Like yeah. the ones are kind of more divergences in style, or like trying new things. Whereas Seven is like, if you want to know what to expect from a David Fincher film, that's where you'd start. Basically, mm. you would not start with Alien Three at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything good starts with anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the characters of the films, um, are there any particular ones in your films that you think stand out better than ones in his other films? Well, I think Social Network is kind of a hard one for that because I think that what makes them such interesting characters is that obviously it's based on They're real people, real, real yeah. people yeah. <laughs> and it's I, I mean. But even that, even actually, to be fair, even without that, I think they're very, very interesting characters and they're very human characters, and I think that's more so than any of uh, his other films. I think they're the, probably the most, yeah, exciting to watch and stuff. See, I think it's like, uh, you say they're interesting and human characters, but I find Fincher to be really, really cold 
in the way that he treats his uh, his, um, his his characters. So I don't like relate to anyone in his films. I don't find myself invested in the struggles. I find myself fascinated, but in like the same way that you're watching a lion get mauled in a nature yeah. documentary. Yeah, no, I don't even. Else. Yeah, like you're by human, not relatable. Yeah, but human as in like just but bad human. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing, like, each one of his characters is just human. You kind of, you have, there are aspects of his characters which you like and which you can identify with, but ultimately there is, like, this kind of, you don't want to identify with them mm -hmm. in a way because they are so human. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. what I'm say, gonna say Gone Girl is just like you, honestly, Ben Affleck. Like, so, what, I mean, like, yes. what I hate this character, he's off, it's like, oh, what a poor guy. And then, like, <laughs> ten minutes later, you just hate him again. It's... I think yeah, he does. You're right. He's very good at doing that sort of stuff. So are you focusing mostly on Gongo, or I'd say out of the two, which is your favourite? I do. I think because I watched Fight Club, when I probably shouldn't have done when I was about fourteen, <laughs> thinking it was just like a nice. That's like thing the perfect age. Yeah, watch that's it. Nice. Yeah. Well, actually, I think my sister. We were going to watch a movie on a Sunday night, and my sister was like, "Oh, can we watch Fight Club?" And my dad was like, "Will this be suitable for Beth?" And then my sister was like, "Yeah, it's fine." And I think it was the scene with. Helen the bottom Carter and Brad Pitt in the bedroom on the top floor. Oh, yeah, and, that's the... <laughs> and then I think my dad just said, okay, I don't think this is very appropriate for you. I think for me, with Fight Club, it's like, it, for, for a lot of people, it is the best Fincher film, even though like I'd say you've got a more valid argument with Seven. I think Fight Club didn't succeed in its Fincherisms in the same way because everyone got wrapped up in this philosophy, this anarchism around it, and like everyone's like uh, eschewing um, uh, materialism and everyone's like loving Project Mayhem and loves the, everyone has the rules of Fight Club as a poster on the bedroom wall, whereas in Seven you don't want to be like the, the killer in Seven, you don't yeah, want to be John Doe, but you really want to be Tyler Durden when you watch uh, Fight Club, yeah, there's like a whole cult around and, that thing. And people sort of get a bit caught up in that, yeah, it's very... Yeah. Um, in terms, of, I don't think we've heard much about the Jang tattoo. Go with the Jang tattoo. Yeah. Uh, anything specific from that film that really stands out? I think like because I haven't watched Gone Girl, so I I'd, I'd be interested to go into it, looking at it, how you look at it, because because I, I think it'd be the same thing that it's like, it's a, it's a story that's been brought to Fincher that is isn't original that people already know and like people were really invested in Gone Girl and there's a lot of people invested in both the books and the original Swedish version of the Dragon Tattoo and Fincher just took it and sort of mutilated it, even changed the ending, like, the ending was, yeah. like, uh, mm -hmm. I think he made it knowing that, like, even though they planned a trilogy, a sequel was never ever going to get made, so yeah. it's its own, yeah. like, standalone film that's an adaptation of a book without being, um, without just retelling it, it has all the Finchery stuff, and it has the best uh, opening, because Fincher likes his Bond intros, where yeah, it's, like, it's the strange, animations, yeah. but it, that's my favourite with the cover. That had Seven of, like, as well, Zeppelin. Seven has a fantastic yeah. intro. Yeah. Um, do you think it's interesting that recently with Gongo and Girl with the Dragon Tattoo he's focused on more leading female roles the very dark as well mm. going away from his opening like in the opening films like Fight Club and Seven they're mostly male Elm has got Ripley in though <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just gonna yeah, yeah, get it. I think he just wanted a job though yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, think, uh, I think that's a good thing because like with those ones and maybe coming back to it in Gongo because I've read the book even though I didn't care for it at all mm. it's like his, his initial films deconstructed masculinity until like he exposed it as the like the ridiculous and complex and artificial thing that it is maybe he's doing the same with femininity now. Yeah, uh, yeah and I think that's I think it's uh, from like a male point of view, it's really uncomfortable. Again, it makes you squirm. It makes you quite uncomfortable because <laughs> a lot of these women like use the fact that they're a woman or that, like their sexuality to sort of as their advantage like in Gone Girl yeah. it's, and it's it's it makes you feel really vulnerable and squirming you see like like David Fincher's <laughs> basically um any concluding points of why your films in particular are better than the other ones yeah what makes it a good film other than the Aaron Sorkin script well <laughs> yeah Aaron Sorkin I think we all know <laughs> that, that makes it fantastic it, right it, it does but well, I think the thing that makes it a good David Fincher film is that it like you say it isn't that gritty it isn't that brown it's you know it's um, it's 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 but it's just as kind of savage you know there's a lot of kind of high education and kind of boardroom lawyer it, it's it's all very clean it's all very civilized and yet you still get that horrible underbelly of humanity that he does so well yeah. he it, it kind of proves that you that you can do all that you can still kind of 
revolve. What's the word? You can be kind of. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll go back. Um, I think it proves that you can kind of inspire that revulsion in your audience without showing anyone actually kind of without dying or yeah. being mutilated in some horrible way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, much, it's much more of a psychological mm. kind of uh, yeah. twist than I um, I think I, I, what I really like about Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I, I wouldn't argue it's his best, I'd just argue it's my favourite David Fincher film. Because it, I think it just proves that Fincher can Fincher most things. Mm. It's like it, it, even though like the subject matter lends itself to a David Fincher film, like he still like takes what Steve Larsson has written and what uh, I've forgotten who directed and wrote the uh, the adaptations for Sweden. But he he like he made it his own still. Mm -hmm. He somehow made it like even more discussing. I think he even made it. It was the psychology of it more than anything because Girl with the Drunk Tattoo was very sort of like its big theme was sexual violence and that kind of thing, and it was a graphic depiction of that, but he brought it more back to the psychology of the characters and made it that kind of that squirmy underbelly and like the, the mind games and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just really enjoy a story that I'm really familiar with becoming so finchery. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I get it, I just think that Seven's so defining of it, and we're talking about all these fincherisms, uh, and this is the film that started it, this is the film that set the bar and set all the tropes and after like 20 years uh, it seems like oh yeah that's a typical David Fincher thing at the time it wasn't though at the time it was just his film and it was definitely his film in every way now we look back at it and we go yeah that's a David Fincher film I think that's why it's definitely the best um, I think I just really like Gone Girl because it she, she like the female character is the first kind of female role to be unpicked and it just kind of highlights how kind of a person, in particular like a female character, can be kind of destructive as well as male characters, which is what was kind of explored in a lot of Fincher's films before Gone Girl. Mm -hmm. And when I went to see Gone Girl, I didn't know it was a David Fincher film, and then I remember thinking, oh, this might be a bit like, I, I remember thinking it might be a bit chick flickish, I didn't really know <laughs> right. what to explain. But, and then I remember watching Wasn't it and being surprised. like, well, not pleasantly <laughs> surprised. <laughs> But thinking that's actually really good, but really harrowing, and then I wasn't surprised when yeah. it happened. Well, it was okay. a pretty good thing to me. Um, before I make a judgment, I think I have just some films that weren't chosen that David Finch has directed. Um, curious case of Benjamin Button. That is, they, right. so it's a weird animal in my like, yeah. future canon. Like you don't. That would have been an interesting choice if someone would have called it out because it's not. It doesn't stick out in the mind as a good film, let alone a good David Fincher film. Yeah. I, it never really grabbed me in the same way. Any opinions? Curious case, Benjamin. I'm a, I'm a big practical effects sort of buff, so I did like all the makeup and stuff on it and mm -hmm. things like that. I think it's really well done and uh, obviously Brad Pitt, fantastic actor behind it, sort of makes it all very real. But other than that, yeah, didn't want really grabbed by the film. I think I found it just too, a bit too sad to be like my favourite. Yeah, it's yeah. Weird addition to his filmography. Um, oddly enough, that one and Social Network are the only two that he's been nominated for Oscars for Best Directing. Yeah, Benjamin Button is very Oscar bait, though. It is. Yeah, yeah. 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 he got the yeah. nomination for that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I was gonna, I was leaning towards, um, I was leaning towards Luke's argument for um, Seven because. Um, what you were saying about how it, it set the bar and it started it all, I thought that was very good. And it does, it did start most of his Fincherisms, if we yeah. can call it that, of how it was very, it, it, the whole way it looked was very brown and the start, just everything from his, the opening sequence, um, when it's just setting up, and the fact that we never really see the, the villain until the end, mm -hmm. and how he does that very well, kind of almost like, Steven Spielberg in Jaws, how we never really see the shark, yeah. and it kind of just, he sets it up in a way that it's creepy before anything cre creepy has even really happened, mm -hmm. so that's what I was like, I love all of them, because I love Dave Fincher, but that was what um, got it for me. Um, in terms of my personal preference, actually, Social Network's my third favourite film of all time, so. Um, 